Have you ever asked AI to help you summarize an article or a meeting transcript or a YouTube video in the past? And what was the prompt you used? Well, I have done this task multiple times a week, if not in a day. And I used to just say, summarize this article, attach PDF or YouTube link. And the result is usually I got some instant gratification with some bullet point style summarization. But the problem is usually I don't remember anything in a few days. So then I changed my note taking method with AI by using the QEC plus LA framework. Don't worry, it's not complicated at all. The QEC method stands for question, evidence and conclusion. And this framework is popularized by the author Carl Newport. And what does it mean to have smart nodes? To me, there are two things. One, I have to remember it. And number two, I need to know how to apply it. So in order for the nodes taken by AI to be smart, meaning we can remember it and apply it, we need to provide the AI with a framework that makes a lot of sense to us and is applicable across different contexts, be it a news article, an annual report, or YouTube videos. Now, today I'm going to use Notebook LN to demo this method, but you can choose to use whatever large language model of your choice. So let's dive in. Now, in order to take smart notes, in this video, I am going to share a three-stage process. Stage one, we're going to use the classic QEC framework. In stage two, we're going to ask the limitations and assumptions questions. And the last one, stage three, we're going to go directly into how to apply what we've learned. Now, if you have never used Notebook LM before, you're welcome to check out this video here. In recent days, a lot of my colleagues are referencing this Harvard Business Review article talking about how people are using Gen AI differently in 2025. One of the main takeaways is that the number one use case is becoming therapy and companionship compared to generating ideas in 2024. So I'm going to use this article as a demo. Now, one thing to note is if you're using Notebook LM, you are able to use a direct URL link for it to understand the article you're referencing. However, uh, certain sites like HBR, they have a paywall. Sometimes Notebook LM cannot directly access the article. So in that case, you should just download the article as PDF first. Note that I don't have a subscription with it, so this article is right now free to read. Here, I just open a new notebook. I like to name the notebook first, and I edit the source, which is the PDF of the HBR article. I would prefer Notebook LM here because there's less of a chance for hallucinations compared to other models. The first thing I'm asking is, please summarize this article using the question evidence conclusion framework. A lot of times an article or a book or a video is very engaging is because the author or the speaker used a lot of strong evidence or stories to substantiate the main point. However, sometimes I find myself so engaged in a specific stories then I find myself forgetting the main point or the main question raised in the book or the video. So I think it's really important to use the QEC structure to pull me back to why the evidence was raised and what are the conclusions made out of these evidence. So here we can see that Notebook LM has done a great job at listing the main question. The central question addressed by the article is how are people really using generative AI? Under evidence is listing methodology, technological advancement, shifting use cases and themes, 
specific use cases example conclusions and then here are the conclusions the generative ai has undergone significant evolution in 2025 moving beyond purely technical applications to deeply integrate into emotional self-actualization and personal development aspects of users lives now this is great for us to have a structure to remember what we have just read but it's not enough because we're not entirely outsourcing our critical thinking to the AI. So we need to move on to the second stage. And then we're talking about LA here, which means limitations and assumptions. Now here, I find it to be more effective to ask limitations and underlying assumptions separately than together. So first we're asking what are the limitations in this article? Because believe it or not, even though the article could be really well received and brilliant, there's always limitations or you might say gaps to fill in future development. It says reliance on self-reported data from online forums. So if I were just reading the article, which I did, I wouldn't know that the research team behind this article drew data primarily from online forums. And I also have no idea what's the sample size, what's reliability, and I also mentioned subjectivity in qualitative assessment, limited scope, one, one snapshot. This is interesting. The author acknowledges that their prediction for the future development of AI and application is correct, but rather insipidly safe, making exactly the same prediction now, as they did the previous year, this suggests a cautious, less specific, forward-looking analysis. See, it's really important to know the limitations and more importantly to think about what the limitations specifically are more important to your future application or to your main task. And then we're going to ask, what are the underlying assumptions not ex explicitly stated in the article. Before I hit submit here, I wanted you to understand why assumptions here is important. So think about in the QEC classic framework, there are usually a lot of evidence included in the article, but there are also underlying assumptions made, but not discussed. Um, Think about uh, when you read an article talking about benefits of caffeine intake. And I'm sure you can easily find another article talking about the disadvantages and harm to health of drinking coffee, right? And usually they're both right because they have different underlying assumptions. That usually means the context, people are different, conditions are different. Now, in academic articles, everything will be documented and discussed. And then the general public usually rely on news media to summarize and dilute academic articles in a way that's easy to digest. And usually those news media would also tend to sensationalize the findings. So it's really important to realize there are always limitations and there are always unaddressed assumptions made by well-intentioned authors and researchers. So let's see the answer from Notebook LM. Right, there are seven points. I'm, I'm impressed. Okay, it talks about online forum discussions reflect real world usage accurately. Okay, this is some assumption that the author made but not necessarily correct, right? Qualitative expert review provides objective assessment. Here can be also a question mark. Positive use cases drive adoption more effectively than other factors. Okay, this is something similar to the limitations. Gen AI can effectively fulfill deep human needs. The article highlights therapy companionship as the number one use case, noting its availability, low cost, and non-judgmental nature and it did not discuss the potential risks or limitations of AI in such sensitive areas. And it also assumed AI's non-judgmental nature is universally beneficial for human cognition and development. It also assumed that 
users will continue to adapt and become more proficient with AI. I really like this one. It's kind of just saying that people all together will just become more AI literate and skilled AI users, but it's not sure, right? So I still know a lot of colleagues who don't regularly use AI, even though they are highly educated. So I don't know, in a few years, a lot of us will all just get super skilled. And to be honest, free time you have, you can dedicate to AI learning is also limited. Well, which is why that I am making videos like this to help people level up their AI skills. And number seven, technological progress will continue linearly. I also like this one. So these are the smart bullet points to help us reflect and do more critical thinking with AI as a helpful assistant so that we're not completely outsourcing all the thinking tasks to AI and just copy and paste the summary bullet points and then forget about everything in a few days. So before we move on to the third stage, make sure you see all the outputs to note by clicking on save to note here. I like to save all the output in a Google Doc and you can feel free to create a PDF or Word document, whichever you prefer. I like it in Notebook LM. You can easily convert a note to source. So I'm going to do this. So then in Notebook LM, you are having the original article and the QEC notes as well as the LA notes. So here we can ask AI's help to find applications tailor-made to us, meaning you yourself, in your personal life, or in your work for your company. And this time you can describe your situation or your company's situation specifically, and the AI can help generate applications that are going to be more applicable to you. So this is what I like to ask, for example, I would ask, please share how these findings and discussions are applicable to small business owners in the ed tech industry. And here you can replace this with your specific contacts or your company's context. And personalization and emotional support, leverage advanced AI capabilities, address user perceptions. Okay, you get the idea that with one original source plus two types of notes, now we have three types of sources we can feed into a large language model. Now, um, easily use these three different sources in cloud or Gemini 2.5 Pro or ChatGPT to get a more tailor-made applications rather than just fading it the original article. For example, now I'm using Gemini 2.5 Pro and I ask it to generate a interactive dashboard based on my QEC plus LA notes. And here it is. I think it looks visually appealing and in, in a way more presentable and easier to understand than the original visualization in the HBR article. So I hope today's tutorial is helpful to you and please share your specific use cases down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for your time watching. See you next time.